welcome to this What Is video clip, part of a series of clips provided to you by Lean Frontiers. My name is Oscar Roach and thank you very much for joining me on this. So in this particular clip of about 12 or 13 minutes, we're going to focus on the five step up model, Mr. Aseo Kato's five step up model and step up one in particular. Now this is emanating from a trip I had to Japan with a group from the Institute in 2019. You can see the group sitting there uh, in October. And that's Mr. Kato sitting at the front, uh, in the front row in front of the guy in the red shirt. So let's move forward and have a look at what the five step model actually is. So the, during the course of the week, Mr. Kato handed us a point of reference for the trainer and it was this sheet. And the sheet is titled Steps for Thorough Implementation of Standardized Work. So as I said, it was a point of reference for the trainer. What I really liked about it was that it was a linear representation of what's required for effective standardization. Now, certainly myself, something that's um, uh, cyclical, if you like, or not, as straight, uh, not that straightforward, I find it easier to learn if it's presented or, and I practice in a linear fashion. So that's probably why this appealed to me in particular. Uh, this model. And the second reason was that it placed particular emphasis on step up one being the development of work standards. Now, as I'll talk about in about um, eight or nine minutes, work standards are a critical and important prerequisite for effective standardization. So there was two points of appeal to me of this for this model. All right, so let's have a look at the model in a bit more detail on each of the step ups. The goal, let's start with the goal. The goal is efficient standardized work. That is production attacked, exactly attacked, work sequenced very precisely and just enough whip. Now this is a very lofty goal, but as we know, Toyota has lofty goals. That is why they are so successful. It is why they are who they are and they strive for those lofty goals. So that is the goal is efficient standardized work, production attacked, work sequence precisely and just enough whip and the model illustrates five step ups for getting to this point. So we'll look at each one individually. Step up one, first of all, as I've touched on and I'll expand on at the end, is it towards the end, is the development of work standards. Now, once we have a work standard in place, that has permitted the determination of normal abnormal. That's the fundamental driver of a work standard. And it'll focus on such things as quality, safety, time or productivity. It becomes the fund fundamental point of reference for continuous improvement and problem solving and it's totally necessary for getting to standardized work. <clears throat> Once we've established that, as you can see in the bottom of the slide there, normal or abnormal is determinable. We've, we've, we've uh, achieved step up one, we move on to step up two. And in that, there's a heavy emphasis on training to the work standard. We start balancing work to tact. We start work on sequencing, efficient sequencing of the work. We start developing sufficient uh, whip for just in time. Charts and visual aids will emerge and a means by which rapid determination of normal abnormal starts getting developed. So that occurs in step up two. In step up three, this means for rapid determination and alerting of abnormal normal is in place. In other words, we commonly call that an and on system. <clears throat> reoccurrence, prevention, sorry, reoccurrence prevention is now getting quite effective and efficient. In other words, uh, getting to root cause when we have an abnormal, getting to root cause and then eliminating root cause or reducing the risk of uh, whatever that cause was to an acceptable level. And then we start uh, a standardization of incidental tasks, which might be ma uh, material procurement or housekeeping or all those things that go on around production or the delivery of the service. Um, and then we also start considering the leveling of work with consideration to volume changes. So there's not many of us who have the luxury of uh, working in an environment where we have constant orders coming in. So what we're talking about there, or what step up three was talking about in Mr. Cato's model, is the leveling of the work to be able to cope with fluctuations in production due to orders. So the, in other words, our productivity rates and our cost rates stay at the required level and quality stays at the required level. So that's what's occurring at step up three. <clears throat> step up, and really at the end of step up three, we have standardized work, but it may not be as efficient as it needs to be or can be. So therefore, step up four, we're now getting to the sharp end. We're getting to start focusing on very low cycle up times and very low change over times. 
we start multi-skilling our people and this is where genuine continuous improvement starts. Now what we mean by genuine continuous improvement or what is meant by that is um, sometimes we regard continuous improvement is we're going along performing to standard and we drop off and we recover to that standard and sometimes that's called continuous improvement and I guess in some sense it is as if you if you've eliminated the risk of that ever happening again due to that cause but really what we're talking about here in genuine continuous improvement is raising the bar to a new standard and striving towards meeting that new standard so that's what we mean by genuine continuous improvement in step up four and finally, step up five, we have a rigorous system of checks and balances ensuring effective rapid response to abnormal and ensuring that this genuine continuous improvement I was just talking about is really happening. Now, the good news, because we had quite a lot of discussion about this when this we were given this point of reference, and what most of us related in the group was that ourselves as an organisation and the people we were working with, very, very few, if anyone was at step up four or five, some might have been at step up three, most were around the step up two level. And that was a bit daunting, a bit frightening when we saw this model. But then uh, and we, we discussed this and Mr. Cato said the following, which is critical and a very, a, a very important, I believe. He said, not every organization can and needs to get to step up five, but substantial benefit will be gained by adopting the philosophies of standardization to take you as far as is commercially needed critical statement when you're absorbing the, um, the the content of this step up model. All right, so let's now have a detailed look at step up one. And let's firstly look at why step up one is so important or where this is coming from. Firstly, there's a three, two or three statements that I saw that sort of triggered my interest in particular in pursuing um, and learning more about this myself to, to start with. And that is that uh, there's a quote from John Shook that I saw soon after coming back from Japan. And it said uh, that Cato has hammered the following point for many years. Before you can begin with standardized work, you must clarify your work standards. I'd seen that on the step up model. I thought it started to, two and two started to make four. I then saw this about a month later. If you don't have a clear expectation of what good looks like, then your definition of not good or abnormal, good being normal, not good being abnormal, is subjective and varies depending on who, what, when things are being looked at. That was in the Lean Thinker in December 2019. And then I think a lot of us have seen this statement by Cato. Without work standards, there'll be no standardised work. So once I saw the, uh, these statements and saw where um, the development of work standards sits in the five step ups, I, uh, it, it grabbed my interest. And I thought there's got to be something very uh, valuable in this, which forced me to go further or encouraged me to go further with a number of organisations. So let's look at what step up one actually requires you to do. And the first thing is identify a customer. Now, I've illustrated the customer here as an external customer, perhaps, but I'll come back to that. So we identify who the customer is of our service or our product, and that the principle applies, the philosophy applies, whether it be manufacturing or service provision, it makes no difference. We've, done, we've actually applied this in both. Um, we identify our customer and we determine all the elements in the output that, they, that is valuable to them. And for each of those elements, we then determine the quality parameter that allows us to determine normal abnormal. And that uh, gives rise to our output work standard. So our output work standard will list the elements and the parameters that allow us to find normal abnormal for each of those elements. <clears throat> We're then underway because what we do is we ask ourselves, what is the system, the process or the machine that produced that output? And we ask, what are all the variable elements within that machine or process that need to be controlled in order to, order to get normal in the output. And once we've identified those, we then say, well, what's normal? What's the normal setting, if you like? Let's use the machine as an example. What's the normal setting for those variables? So from that, we end up with our machine or process standard. Then we ask ourselves to do with the human interaction with the machine or the process, what are all the variables or the elements of interaction and what's normal for each of those elements and from that we get a work standard that's uh, very much people focused and uh, their movement and what they do. So in essence what we've done here is we formed a hypothesis that once we've defined normal for the people interaction and what, how they interact with the machine or process 
uh, once we define normal for that, that and they follow normal, then the machine or process will be set to normal. The hypothesis then is that, it'll, that the output produced will be normal in terms of the elements that are of value to the customer and the customer will therefore be happy and come back and buy more. Um, now, one point I've made a little bit earlier, and it's from the way I'm talking, I'm sure it sounds this way, that we're referring only to the external customer. That's not the case. In turn, determining your output standard, there is very much influence from, or there can be influence from both the external customer plus the internal customer. Or in some cases, it might just be only the internal customer that influences that output standard. So this is step up one, and, and in just very brief and broad terms, how we apply step up one. So thank you very much for listening. I appreciate uh, the time you've taken to spend with me. If you have any questions, please give, give me a, uh, send me an email on, at oroach at twiinstitute.com. Again, thank you for your time and thank you to Lean Frontiers for the opportunity.